I would like to continue with rewriting another grim story, fairy tale, uh, from a Buddhist perspective. Many of us grew up with those fairy tales, and some tales appeared quite gruesome uh, and difficult, maybe, to understand for children. I don't know about you, but um, for example, uh, Little Red Riding Hood or Hansel and Gretel, <laughs> very harsh. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so I didn't really like these tales that have been so gruesome. Um, as a child, I did not know about the origin or why the Grimms told it that way. But now I understand more, you know, in the beginning of the 19th century, where indeed there have been many people um, suffering due to starvation. So it, for example, it was not unusual for parents to leave their children um, because they could not provide them with enough food. So still, some parents today face the same situation even in developed countries. But I think one could say that, um, um, that the majority of cases in the West um, don't um, suffer due to starvation or dark forest where they get hunted by wild animals. I think therefore today um, I would like to share with you a more up-to-date version and in a Buddhist context of Hansel and Gretel. Uh, it's a very famous fairy tale. And it uh, contains very valuable lessons. I don't want to downplay the story or the content in itself. It teaches us, for example, about love between brother and sister, about the parents' devotion, about um, virtues and non-virtues. So, um, but let's um, share the Buddhist version, the more up-to-date version. Hansel and Gretel are brothers and sisters who lived in a sufficient two-story family house with their father and stepmom. Their house was in a suburb of a Northwest America, in a, a Northwest American city, with beautiful surroundings, surroundings of forests and meadows. Since the stepmom Mom did not appreciate nature and contentment. She longed to buy a bigger house in the middle of the city, but they could not afford it yet. Therefore, she, she suggested one day to her husband that they both took care, take on a third job so they could buy a better house, a bigger house, and a car. After both parents found another job, Hansel and Gretel found themselves most of the days, including weekends, alone. At night, the parents were too exhausted to care for their children. The father, so felt very sorry for not being able to spend time with the children. He loved his kids, but his wife was persistent and kept urging him to continue with his third job. To keep the kids occupied, they provided them with one computer and PlayStation for each to play games, um, to chat with friends, to watch videos, and so forth. Hansel and Gretel liked playing with the computer, but they did not know what was good for them and what not. Since their parents weren't home, they ended up becoming deeply involved with playing games on the internet and chatting with other people in online forums every day and late into the night. Hansel discovered an online game that Gretel could play with too, and both spent more and more hours on the internet so that they even forgot to um, go to school or to eat. The games and other apps were so exciting that they totally forgot where they were or that they were hungry. One day, so Gretel mentioned to Hansel that she feels very lonely, even though she spends so many hours every day in the internet playing games, watching videos, and so forth. Hansel, too, recognized some feeling of loneliness, also because he missed his father very much. They hadn't had not seen him for many months because he, became, he came home when they were asleep. They both discovered Facebook and connected with online friends. First, it looked very exciting. Uh, they got a taste of it. Then, online friends invited them to check out this and that, and so they got really hung up with it. Hansel soon had hundreds of online friends. He was very busy checking Facebook and other social media. Every hour, reading, listening, watching things that his hundreds of friends posted. His online friends asked him to post more and better things by liking his posts. Every day, instead of having his finger shagged by the old woman, <laughs> as told in the original story to prove if he gained more weight, 
They ask him every day to post more and better in order to please him. So he did somewhat, and Gretel supported him by providing him with ideas, new graphics, videos that she created or found in the World Wide Web. But Hansel never felt really completely satisfied. His yearning for his father took more of uh, more now his more immediate attention. One day, a follower from the social media asked him to join him virtually by playing a game that involved full participation day and night. Gretel did not want it, neither Hansel. Hansel really missed his father. He did not like to miss him every night. He wanted to stay awake at night so he could at least see him then. So he messaged his hundreds of followers, online followers, that he will leave social media and end their real life. This made some people very angry. They were basically burning inside, filled with overcoming afflictions such as greed, anger, jealousy, and fear. They threatened him, they posted nasty entries on his social media accounts, but Hansel closed all his online accounts and turned his computer off to enter real life again. First, he and Gretel cleaned up the house and decided together to stay awake during the following night to meet their father. After waiting a few hours, indeed, their father arrived late at night. He filled the refrigerator to leave food for the kids and his wife. Hansel and Gretel then entered the kitchen and ran towards their father, who had not had even one happy hour since he decided to take a third job to increase the income of the family to please his greedy wife. And when seeing his children, he became so overjoyed that he decided to quit his third job so he could spend more time with his children. The stepmom was very displeased and left the household, but Hansel and Gretel and their father were very happy rediscovering the richness of their love for each other. They felt alive again, and Hansel and Gretel developed their greatest potential by learning to feel love for their parent, but also by recognizing what is beneficial for them and what is not. They decided to keep tight control over the internet by using, for example, screen time that helped them limit their time in the internet. Instead of spending so much time online, they spent time with friends at their homes and gardens. They went hiking or had wonderful full meals with um, their father. They also discovered a new hobby, joining regular meditations <laughs> and studying Buddhism to find meaning in their life through realizing their true power within, instead of social media, games, videos, and such. So they were ha very happy ever after. <laughs> so I would like to invite each of us to check our own mind when we are um, in regard to media use. How many hours do we spend uh, online? And do we really find happiness in uh, sitting in front of a screen um, so many hours instead of walking in nature, instead of feeling the sun in our face, instead of smelling the air, hearing the birds, or reading a Dharma book? Is there any other source that um, could provide you with real happiness? So I would like to encourage us to take back our power, um, not to lose it in the World Wide Web, to hold the deep care and love we have for each other and all sentient beings and the environment very dear to our heart. I just wanted to thank you so much for this uh, modern version of the tale because what you described was uh, exactly what I saw in the lives of all the students, that I, a lot of the students that I taught um, who took refuge in the internet. And that was the wicked witch of their childhood. Yes. It got to the point where we, teachers had to go and intervene and remove one child from a computer because mm -hmm. he had stopped coming to school for that long. <laughs> Um, and also, yeah, people were just obsessed with pornography, mm -hmm. all kinds of really unhealthy influences. And that mm -hmm. was their childhood. Mm -hmm. And it broke my heart to see that. Yeah. So sometimes more heartbreaking is like you need fictional stories because that ending does not happen, unfortunately, in real life. But yeah. hopefully we create, people will make different decisions. We yeah. had actually um, like um, one young adult who was here. Um, Nobody was around. Um, I saw the group um, in the back of Shanrezi Hall. Um, one of the um, young ladies um, informed the other ones about the um, uh, uh, disadvantages of using um, cell phones all the time. And she gave them information how to reduce and what kind of apps they could use to reduce that. I learned, for example, from them the screen time thing. And 
So, and they all were very interested and said, can I still use it as a navigation system for meaningful things and so on. So there, there are some people. And I have one friend and um, she said she really wishes to have a flip phone back, you know, uh, just, just doing phone calls, the necessary things, because she realized it's too distracting and harmful for herself. And I saw also in media, at least in German media, more and more people saying, let's take our time back, our power back. We are um, victims of that new technology, and that say that we can't control our consumption of it. Yeah. Thank you.